First, first, Taria, how are you? Good, I'm good, thank you. Talking a lot these days about dark Christmas. <laughs> but I am good. I am very happy. Still at home, preparing the tour that is coming and uh, writing songs, preparing a new album. And yeah, just taking my time and trying to chill in the meanwhile also <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. So... Yeah, you mentioned it already, A Dark Christmas. So there, there's a new album out. And before we delve into the album, uh, I'd like to go back to the beginning in that sense. Do you have a Christmas memory from your youth that sticks out to you? Well, well it must be the one that when I received my um, my Black Hellas Finnish-made piano when I was a kiddo. I think I was around eight years old when my parents gave that present for me it was nothing I was expecting I mean seriously they really really kept it as a really nice surprise because it was not that my parents had a lot of money or some no it was like they really they really made an effort to to bring me to give me that piano so it was like a big thing for me and that piano is still uh, here in my home in uh, Marbella and my daughter is using it it's still it's really tough old Beautiful piano still functions really fine. <laughs> so, so money well spent, it sounds like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So, but you right. mentioned something very, very interesting, uh, which is your daughter playing it now. And now I believe, uh, obviously, um, you sang in the choir when you were uh, younger in a church choir. And your your daughter is yeah. doing a similar thing at the moment, I suppose. Um, yeah, yeah. What, exactly. what is it? Yeah, what is it like to see your daughter kind of, I don't know if following your footsteps is the right way, but, but also kind of embracing singing uh, the way you did? It's uh, actually, it's annoyingly, <laughs> <laughs> annoyingly, um, I would say that it's annoying that she has such talent. Um, because I remember, you know, of course, I was a little girl already. I was six years old when I started um studying music i wanted my my parents to find me a piano teacher when i was six years old my daughter was four years old when she asked me mama i wanna i want to start playing piano can you get me a sing can you get me a teacher can you find me a teacher okay she was four so she started already earlier but of course she's been a touring baby she was with her both parents on tour four years with me when she was born, I took her everywhere in the rehearsals and concerts with symphonic orchestras, with all the tours with the rock band. So she has seen the, the world many times around mm -hmm. and you know, in her very, very early uh, years. Sure. And so now she is showing that she is talented in music, and but it's her own way. That is what I like very much, that it's not like she is willing to copy me. For example, classical singing is not her thing at all. She's like, no. <laughs> She's drumming. She plays mm -hmm. drums. She plays the piano still, but drums is her thing. Yes, she sings, but it's not like um, the drums is like crazy motivation that she has at the moment, at least. Let's see. Let's yeah, see. but but that's awesome to hear. And what I like about it as well is, um, I believe now on you did a couple of other Christmas albums as well. So your daughter was also on from uh, Spirits and Ghosts, if I'm not mistaken. And now this yeah. time around, she's she's in that choir. So what is it like to kind of incorporate your daughter into what you do? It's a kind of a, it's a kind of it was fun for me. The last album, she was still quite small. So in right. a way that, it, okay, you want to do this? And yeah, yeah, I want to do this. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. But now it's like, okay, you are there to do it. You know, mm. she played drums for All I Want for Christmas is You. She plays the drums in a song and then she sings in a kid's choir together with her friends. And okay. that was the, I loved working with the children because, um, I've seen them in her in her school. You know, they do these productions, musical productions. And ever since, actually, I brought my daughter to that school, the school 
Okay, the director is a fan. <laughs> but but I, I have to say that uh, they started to make a lot of rock projects and uh, motivating the kids. And I love that so much. I'm crying there in the concerts always. I'm super proud of the kids because they are really talented. And I, when I was working with this Christmas album, I chose the songs for the album, together with the children, okay. neighbors, children, and mine. You know, I was driving them to school every morning, playing them Christmas songs and checking out which ones of these songs in my list they really know. And then I made my selection. And then, because the kiddos were there already in the beginning of the selection of the songs, I said, okay, I want to involve an unprofessional kids choir to the album because with the cinematographic sound I had in my mind, the children can be the creepiest, creepiest mm. creatures. <laughs> <laughs> like you could think of them in the movies. Uh, yeah, definitely. So they are the creepiest. So I said, okay, well, this is it, but they cannot be a professional choir. I don't want to, them to be perfect. Mm. Now, but you mentioned something very interesting, which is uh, I'm fascinated by uh, children's choirs because, as you, as you mentioned, um, even though their voices are very pure in a sense, it's also for some reason really creepy, maybe because of the yeah. movies, movies, like you say. But why do you think that is, that children's voices kind of make us uneasy? Yeah, I don't know. That is, <laughs> I think it is the innocence in them because we lost it a long time ago already. I think it is like somehow hmm, hmm, you, it you gets, kind of see the future that that it, it yeah. will not last or something. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> I got something. It is there um, that gets us to reconnect, and then it's not necessarily something that we at times we like. You know, could mm. be. Hmm. And well, you, you mentioned you let. Um, the children help you select the songs. Now, obviously, they're from a different generation, so their um, frame of reference might be different than yours. What were the kind of the, the the differences between how you thought about Christmas songs or Christmas, uh, I, yeah, kind of the spirit of Christmas Eve? Because I really, I have to be honest with you that the songs that I chose for the album are not necessarily my favorite Christmas songs at all. Not at all i do not enjoy the the original songs mm. because it's like the commercial side of christmas this americanized christmas that has been given to us through the movies and all that but okay it's been so overplayed in general that i don't find the beauty in that type of music any longer and i am absolutely sure that there are many like me there out there so Christmas music is like a bad word for many people. And that's why I have started to do these darker Christmas albums, because I, I feel like music is still needed in that time of the year, you know. And for me, I lost Christmas when my mother passed away. That was already 20 years ago. Mm. So I kind of needed to reconnect with my Christmas. And one of the things that helped me at that time was music. Mm. So I believe it's very, very real that, uh, okay, the the album might have a darker character, but it's not dark. It gives you light and it gives you peace, mm. and makes you feel good. With the songs that you all know, you all know these songs. Everybody knows these songs, kind of like Hey, the little kids know these songs. Sure. Hmm. But it, it, it's fascinating because I think, uh, you're right, When whenever we think of Christmas, it's it's this Hollywood ver version of it almost. But yeah. there is a dark side to to the holidays yeah. or Christmas because there's a, there's a lot of loneliness around that time. There's a lot of despair and those kind of things. I mean, I suppose certain life elements will get highlighted during those, those days. So... Yeah. What interests you in the in kind of the the other side of Christmas? What what is it about? Um, yeah, this is this this ominous or this creepy undertone, perhaps. 
you know, I'm a Finnish woman and uh, Christmas is in Finland. It's a dark time of the year. It's the one of the darkest times of the year. Our Christmas is quiet. It's like damped. You know, if we have a lot of snow, it's so silent. You can only see the little little candle light, little Christmas lights from the houses, and that's it. It's pitch black. And there is a lot of solitude. There is a lot of depression. There is a lot of loneliness in the country. So I wrote my song, Dark Christmas. It, it's fully inspired by all those feelings that I have myself felt while I was there, living there, being young, being kind of looking out of the world, like willing to get out of there, but not being able to do the step yet. And then my mother's passing and all that. I, I felt all that. And I wanted to put it out like in the music, like because it's been the way I express myself and my thoughts always music has been there. So that is the creepiness sort of that darkness. Mm. Uh, I don't know if this is a, I don't know if this is a good connection and if it's not, then just let me know. But uh, yeah. your first solo album, which was kind of around that time uh, when the whole Nightwish kind of oh. thing ended, the, your first album was uh, full of Christmas songs. You yes. mentioned your music playing the role that it did when your mother passed away. And obviously uh, the breakup with Nightwish was a difficult time for you. What role did music play and those Christmas songs play for you in that time then? It was like, uh, it gave me life, kind of, very hard. It's a very big thing to do, big thing to say, but it was 2005 when my... My work with Nightwish ended and it was 2005 when I had this tour um, already. The first Christmas tour was planned without me knowing that I'm not, mm -hmm. I will not be anymore in the band. Um, and the tradition started from there. I remember when I was singing in these concerts, I was destroyed, completely destroyed mentally uh, I had been crying like weeks <laughs> and I was still crying because I didn't know who is going to be there. These are Christmas concerts. Is there anybody interested in seeing me in these concerts? And I went on the road and they were all packed, filled with people. People were crying. They were so happy, first of all, to see me back on my feet and <clears throat> getting with music. Different type of music, yes, with Christmas music, but back on the road and back to be who I am. And it helped me. It kind of saved me in that moment. And then, and yeah, then, uh, sorry to interrupt, but that must have given you confidence then to to write your own solo music and then to kind of be, um, yeah, to, to understand that people are uh, willing to yeah. listen. Then, of course, of course. Yeah, I was a I was a wreck, <laughs> but you know I needed to go through that. It was incredible to start writing your own songs and and learning oh how is to express really yourself through the through the music, and then seeing those songs being played. You know when when I get to sing those songs for my audience for the first it was like. The emotion, the roller coaster of emotions I went through at that time, I still do. I still do. It's like, what the fuck? People are listening to my songs all over the globe, like, and singing my lyrics. Oh my God, how is this even possible? But yeah, it's unbelievable. It's a gift. And uh, because I went through <laughs> such. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, could it take it? Well, it's interesting because you mentioned kind of the 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 absurdity almost of of, of music of being being able to to travel across the globe and then touch people uh, everywhere. When did you figure figure that out? Because obviously, from a young age, you were a really good singer. I mean, I, I can I'm not a vocal technician or whatever, but obviously, you're a great singer. So when did you know that you could could touch people with with the sound of your voice and 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 then later on with the lyrics that you write. You know, there is a one moment when I was eighteen years old uh, in a university. I my singing teacher 
her name was Karina, or is Karina, and she was telling me one day that Tarja, you have a diamond in your voice. That diamond, we are like we are thousands of singers. We are so many of us. There are so many of us, but only few of us we have that diamond that we need to really take care and polish it and maintain, maintain it shining, because I understood that. It has been given to me to sing with the soul. It's been there ever since I was a very, very little girl. Um, there is no way, no way on earth I cannot can sing without my heart. Mm. And it's also a burden in a way that I can't, I'm like an open book always. So, but that's been given to me. I do not sing perfectly. No, I sing out of tune. I do this and that. I make mistakes and all that. But I sing with my heart. And I realized that. I've realized that since the quite very beginning of career with Nightwish, it was already like that. It was crazy, the connection between me and the audiences. And, you know, like the energy connection between me and the public. Is there a difference? This is this is I don't know, maybe a stupid question, but is is there a difference between the energy you get when you sing more of a classical uh, type of song compared to more of the, the rock concerts? Is it is there a difference in the type of energy? What I receive, there is a difference. Hmm. What I receive, if I sing classical music, it's like a it's a sort of like a meditation. The hmm. process is very deep it's in harmony is peaceful you reconnect you reconnect with yourself and your with the breathing mostly because you are very much concentrated in breathing in rock concerts i do not have time to think about my breathing and i don't even want to think about technique when i'm singing there is a difference uh in classical singing is the soul connection probably is in a way deeper because of all the thing that the work that you do with the body with breathing but in rock it connects automatically and gives me the freedom to the, mm. be the crazy and you know what the hell i want to do i want to do i can do there are no limitations so in that sense i have to say that i I've, I've been very blessed that I have been able to go through them, you know, the whole range of things and maintain them in my life. Um, it's pretty incredible. That job will never stop, you know, to, to reconnect with yourself. That never yeah. stops. I, I read something where they asked you, uh, will you be doing this when you're 70? And you said, absolutely, there's no way I will stop singing or trying to make new, no. new music. So. No, no, no. At least I can. No. <laughs> yeah, my yeah, my daughter knows. She knows that you know. Says she's gonna continue as long as she feels good about it. I mean, really, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, get, getting back to Dark Christmas uh, quickly. Dark Christmas, the track uh, is the one you wrote. And you mentioned, as you mentioned, it's it's not necessarily depressing in a sense or or anything. Uh, it's a darker vibe or sound, but the the line I wrote down from that song is "Believe the power of your dream." So there there is some some strength in it. Why mm. was that important for you to put that in into the album? No, exactly. That's the importance that we get to forget when the times are dark. Uh, let your shine. Um, let your light shine again. It's the more. It's really. It's very hard to find that light in you when you feel down. Even when you are sick, you are sick now. You are like, oh my God, when is this going to go over, you know? It's very hard when you feel bad to think positive about things, you know? But you need to try to <clears throat> look for it. And that's why there is always in us, there is a certain amount of darkness and there is a certain amount of light in all of us. And in everything in life, it's the same thing. The 
yin and yang. You know, it's mm, always, sure. it's all present. Sometimes we go and we go deep down and we forget. Hmm. Now, what you, uh, you mentioned, and I don't want to repeat too much of this, but um, some of the darkest periods in your life, I mean, the breakup with Nightwish, uh, I think in 2008 you had a stroke and there was a lot of health uh, concern. In those darkest moments, how do you get through it? What 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 is it that gets you through? Is is it music? Is it family? The, how do you kind of find that light in the darkness? Well, my last uh, really difficult period, as you said, two thousand eighteen, was the stroke that I got, and at the time I was writing my new album. And again, I have to say that it was the music that really saved me. Again, mm. it's like there's been music in every occasion, every bad occasion in my life. Music. Of course, it's with who I am. I have a great partner in crime, you know, my my husband. We work together. I have a beautiful family. I have friends. One needs friends, real friends. And then again, it's the strength in you that you need to find. Of course, I was seeking for help also. I, I did not stay and, uh, you know, just thought that I can manage this alone. No, I wanted to look for help. And uh, now I'm taking care much more than I ever knew that you can take care of your mental health. And that's the thing that I really have understood that that stroke was just about my stress. And so it's like, if I can avoid that, I will. Mm. Mm. So whenever something like that happens, you you learn from it in a way, and you kind of yeah. can adjust it's your life. Scary. A bit. It's it's so it's so idiotic in a way if you think about it. That mm. why the hell we need to go until that far, mm. and then we learn. But why we cannot, you know, already uh, stop <laughs> before the before path. yeah before the the engine turns red. Um, but good. No, but I am exigent. Like they say that I am, uh, I am, uh, like because I'm a perfectionist in a way that I, I want to deliver. I want to be a good mother. I want to be a good uh, wife. I want to be a great artist. I want to, you know. Mm -hmm. So then I put myself into this. I put myself this ladder, sort of that I need to keep on climbing up. That is bullshit. That is, it's not fine because you can be less. But, but that's the thing behind you. I see all those uh, albums and stuff behind you. And, and I mean, you've, you've been, like you said, you've traveled the world and you, you've, you've been uh, in very, very nice places, nice opera halls, all, the, all those kind of things. So so do you still have that, that desire for quote unquote success in a way? Well, that will never die in a way. That will never die uh, because I enjoy my work so much. Uh, the thing is that I I love still today, if there is a country I haven't been performing in, you know, and comes an offer for a concert, I'm like a little kid. I'm like, oh, I really want to see what's there, what's there. You know, what kind of type of an audience? It's really exciting. It's still exciting. and. Uh, and going back to the places I've been before, it's it's also exciting because I know how already, you know, connect, make that connection with the public. So it's like, I really, I I know I'm doing, a, <laughs> you know, I am happy with what I'm doing, but it's like, um, I am very blessed that I can do what I love. Mm. Uh, and I have two more questions. The first is you mentioned that your favorite Christmas song is not on the album. Now, my favorite Christmas song is, I don't know if it's really a Christmas song, but it's a uh, fairy tale in New York by the Pogues and uh, Chrissy McCarroll, which is, yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of, a, it's not really a Christmas song, but kind of. Uh, what is your favorite Christmas song? Varpunen Jouluaamuna is my Christmas song. It's, uh, that's my favorite. It's a Finnish, very traditional Christmas song. Super melancholic, though. Um, it's a sad story about a bird, but anyway, uh, we Finns are super melancholic people. In the era. Uh, that's why my Christmas songs, in a way, my Christmas music 
when I was a kiddo, it was not this commercial Christmas music. It was more that melancholy kind of side of Christmas music. And But yeah, Varbone, I sing that though in every Christmas concert of mine. Mm. Yeah, but there's, uh, I'm sure you heard this song, but I think it's by Mud. It's uh, It'll Be Lonely This Christmas. That, that, that's, uh, even though it's a very commercial song, I like that one because it yeah. kind of, it's, it's true for a lot of people. So it's uh, I, I always uh-huh. like that one as well. Um, my last question is, we talked a little bit about your daughter, and I've, uh, I've um, heard that you you are in contact with uh, Flo Janssen, and you, you see uh, yourself as sisters in metal, and then you talked about the, the rise of women in metal. Now, your young, uh, daughter is still young, so who knows what she will do with her future, but are you more optimistic, uh, let's say, if she wanted to go into music, that it's going to be easier for her than it was for you? Nothing is easy today. I would say that for no one, it's an easy road to take. Um, To be an artist today, uh, there are so many changes that we are living through at the moment. And what I have needed to learn as an artist, for sure, it's like a lot of stuff. Um, Because I'm still like the old timers, you know. I started almost 30 years ago and I'm still like, you know, looking back to those times doing my physical products and all that. But if my, you know, talking about, if my daughter would like to be an artist, of course I would be there to support her. Heaven, who knows what kind of future and how hard it will be and what kind of artificial intelligence and whatever <laughs> she's dealing with at that time. And, you know, the times are changing so much rapidly. So. Uh, I don't know if it's easier or harder because there will be a lot of competition and to find your own voice is difficult in every case. It is, you have to be you. Why it's you that will make it through. You have to remain you and it is difficult. One last kind of question then, what allowed you to find yourself in music or find your voice in music? What gave you the confidence or, or the, the right pathway to find yourself? I found music when I was badly bullied in school, sort of. It was my way to escape and to find myself feeling good. It was music. I was a lonely kid, oh, you know, and music was there for me because it was my way to express myself already when I was a very little. And with that, feeling like I was good at, good at something, I felt, okay, I want to keep on doing this. I want to do this, 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 this. And then when I was born in a very, very tiny, teeny, tiny village in Finland, so there were no opportunities for me really to start music. So I needed to leave for a bigger city. My high school was already high school of music and all that. So it was like, I knew I was very dedicated. Like since before I was 10 years old, I sh- I was right. sure already hey, I want to become a musician and this is what I do. And, you know, I will fight my way through the university. Classical singing was actually the thing that really changed it all for me. Mm. I started losing my voice when I was singing songs from Whitney Houston or Aretha Franklin or things like that, great singers. And I just couldn't make it. I felt like... (laughs) I want to become a singer and how the hell I'm, I don't have the, I don't, I don't know what to do. I need to find a professor. And I was 15 years old when I started taking singing lessons. But that teacher was a lyrical singing teacher. It was unexpected for me. Like, I didn't know when I, first time I stepped on her lesson and she starts doing me some lyrical singing exercises. And I'm like, oh, what is this? And then it hit me because my voice changed radically. And it was amazing. It was like (gasps) adventure. Mm -hmm. And there it went. Like then it all changed to me. I said, okay, well, here we go. (laughs) I want to go there. (laughs) Hmm. Uh, That's beautiful. And that's because, yeah, and then how many decades later you're still here doing the same thing. So that's that's just beautiful. Um, Daria, may I thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me? 
No worries at all. Thank you for having me. And you better take it easy and uh, get better. I've got, I've got, I've got my uh, uh, ginger tea. Ginger and, and lemon. And, yeah, Very and, good. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm, ta- I'm taking it easy these days. Very good. Very good. Hey, right. it was nice talking to you. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. And you too.